Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 400 for Monday, October 23rd, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. Our sponsor for this episode is Banzoogle.com, where you can go and use the code GIGGABPOD to get 15% off the first year of any subscription. We'll talk more about the details of all that in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, celebrating our 400th show, I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. 400. I know. It's crazy, man. Just like that. He's go by. Yep. He's go by. <laughs> yep. Yep. And and because it's a number that's, you know, divisible by, by a hundred and has zeros in it. It's, it's important, I guess. I don't know. Like, you know, 399, 401, they're all, I, I like doing the show every time. It doesn't matter what the number is, but it is okay. kind of, it is kind of fun. 400. There you go. Also, we, uh, we had to take last week off, not, not because of this, but I'll say it was because of this. Cause we, we wanted to give you time to celebrate your birthday. Happy birthday, Paul. Thank you, man. We both are Libras. We both kind of fit this stuff in as the falls upon us. So it's true. I had, you know, I, I did my birthday and then I left and I d- just did a week of day job work in Las Vegas. Did not breathe any fresh air for eight days ah. in that cement tube. I know what that's yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I tell you, but, um, it was good. And, um, uh, came back, had a gig, had a, I, I landed at about noon, did a rehearsal and actually, the funny story here is, you know, it's, it's with the guys that play with down here on the Central Coast. And, you know, one guy was kind of talking about some medical things. And one guy was talking about, you know, some upcoming medical things. And, <laughs> and we were just kind of laughing about our, our rock and roll life here. Um, and uh, then we went to play the, a gig the next night. And uh, we're two, three of us are there. And one guy texts, he goes, oh. My dad, you know, fell and I oh, got to no. get him to the emergency room. Right? Yeah. And, 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 you know, I've, he's okay. I mean, he, he fractured his shoulder, which is good, but I was just kind of reflecting like, this is really possible any day of the week when you kind of get to be a, of a certain age, right? It is. If it's not you. If it's not you, it's your folks or, it's you know, somebody other close to you. Yeah. 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 So anyway, yeah. it's, um, it's how, it's how life goes, I suppose. You know, but we just keep on rocking. Yeah, you got with no other choice, right? I, I don't have any other choice. No, no. We had a um, we had a spectacular bitter pill gig at uh, back at the Stone Church. Our friend Dan Blakesley uh, performs every Halloween as Doctor Gasp, and so and Doctor Gasp and the Eeks, and so uh, we opened up the show for him, and just what a great night! Every, we all wore costumes, and you know, Halloween. Like the whole costuming thing really kind of ups the energy of a, of a show. And I'm, I've been thinking about that since that show, like what else can we do so that it's like that every show? Like, Mm -hmm. like why? Like I I want that energy all the time. And, 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 you know, so, so there's, there's thoughts swimming around about that because I, I, I think there is a there there, right? Like making your shows, every one of your shows, an event. And this one, certainly we, you know, we told people feel free to wear costumes and some people did and some people didn't. The band, we all did. Um, but, I, you know, I don't, yeah, the energy, I don't know, the energy was great. The, the stage volume was just perfect. Um Everything just sounded good, and one of those nights. Yeah, the room sounded good. Every everything was good. It, it was it was it was one of those nights. Band played really well, and uh, everybody everybody had a blast. Um, so yeah, it was good. I, I have some logistical things from that evening, and and actually a thing that happened. We closed out the theater show that I was doing, Passing Strange, this past weekend, which also went really well. I'm I'm really nice. fortunate that I got to do that show. Yeah, it, with a a, a story. That's told by the black lead singer of a band and, and then all of the actors are, are, you know, also black because it's this, the way the story is told. It's, it's a story that, that resonates, 
I, with with me and obviously I'm not black, but you can't put on this play with all white people. And, uh, you know, here in New Hampshire, that's mostly what we are just as a, as a demographic. So I'm uh, very fortunate that I got to do this show. I never heard about it before, but if you ever get the chance to see it, it's called Passing Strange. I highly recommend it. Great music, good story, uh, you know, fun. Never even heard of it before. No, I hadn't either. No, no. And I was just, I was told by my friend Julius first and then my friend Billy were both like, oh, if you have the opportunity, play that show. It's right up your alley. And they were 100% nice. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was, uh, it was all good. I, I guess I, I guess I can share this, the, so the, uh, the, <laughs> The, the subject or the title that I've given this next segment, folks, is you give sub a bad name. Um, it's not quite that bad, but maybe it is. So I had to have a sub for uh, one of the performances of Passing Strange this week because I had to go down and back to New York for a, a press meeting work thing. And uh, I had a really hard time finding someone. I, I reached out to like eight drummers that I know that can like read and do theater shows and every one of them. And this was months ago that I, I started reaching out, you know, probably like June and everybody was booked on this one night. I was like, dude. So I reached out to the folks at the theater, maybe two or three months ago. And I'm like, look, I've struck out. There's no world where I can be around that night. I don't know what to do. And I don't like passing this off on you to solve this problem. But I, like, I got nothing. I, I cannot put a drummer in a seat that night for you. It, me, not me, not anybody else. And they were like, oh, we have this one guy. Let me reach out to him. We've never used him before. Okay, great. So, um, and he was available, turned out. So, okay, great. And I went, and 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 part of the story that I'm going to share, it's important that I, I I point out that I went above and beyond for this guy of my choosing. Right. Like no one asked me to go nuts prepping this guy for the show, but I, you know, I felt an obligation. I wanted to do it. So I really like I, the way I marked up my book and everything, I really just like made sure he had the best chance at success that he could possibly have. And I got to benefit from it too. Cause I had this book that was, had way more breadcrumbs in it than I would ever put for myself. Cause I'd be like, Oh, I'll remember that. I'll remember this. And I knew he would be doing it once. So it's like, all right, let me help him. Let me do this. And so I definitely got to benefit from it, I, it but you know, went nuts, spent a bunch of time on the phone with him, talked him through it, seemed like a nice guy. And he played the show very well. Like all of that super successful. But I was, you know, like nervous about it. I even went in, like the show is in rotation with another show or was in rotation with another show that was happening. So it wasn't like we got to set up on stage and just leave it that way for whatever, four weeks. We, you know, we would take, uh, take everything down. I would pack my drums up into the back room and then we would bring them back out. And it turned out the show that, that I had to sub was the first show after 12 days off, just the way the schedule worked. So I went into the theater ahead of time before I went down to New York and I set up my drums and, you know, put them out there for him. And I told him, I'm like, you know, uh, you bring your own snare and stool and kick pedal and cymbals. If you want, you're welcome to use any of my stuff, but you know, if you want to feel more comfortable do all that. Okay, great. And so, um, I get this text from him while I'm on the train on the way back from, uh, from New York to say, hey, Dave, I think the show went well, just please come in a little early tomorrow. You're going to murder me. I had to make some adjustments to your drums in order to not have to think too hard. I'm so sorry if it causes you any extra work. I had a lot of fun. Please call me again. And I'm like, if you had to make changes to something, wouldn't you put them back or at least attempt to put it back? <laughs> and I texted him and asked him, like, did you ask him, did you, did you like try to put it all back? And I, no answer, nothing. So I, I went in and, Obviously, I found that everything was like everything was moved out of the way. I, you know, rearranged my schedule to go in early and did all this stuff. It was just what an interesting choice to make <laughs> from from his. I think he did a great job put, pulling off the show and all of that. But then just to I like it's it, and maybe I'm the one that's that's like misinformed here, but. Anytime I use somebody else's kit, 
if I have to move things around, and sometimes you do, you know, we're all different heights and shapes and sizes and all that stuff. I at least attempt to put it back how I found it. And, and I would, I would also like warn them like, Hey, I moved some things. I think I was able to get them back pretty close, but if things seem out of place, you know, Goldilocks, like th- this is why kind of thing. It's just good manners. Right. It just seemed rude. <laughs> yeah. Like, dude, you could have taken five minutes and tried well, to put things back. Let me ask you a question here. It was, just, it was just weird. It is weird, but let me, let me just talk to you about subs for a while because the whole concept of subs is weird to me. Okay. I think I told you this, that of all the years that we've had subs. Yeah. And again, my horns are reading, so that's not terribly painful. Although, you know, the show is not quite the same. They don't get every cue. Correct. There's a couple of super tricky passages that we've learned over the years that we try to send them in advance. Horns are are passable. But in my band, subbing a rhythm section, I will will do everything I can not to do it, including including passing on a gig or canceling a gig. But I am amazed... That the general mentality, if you have a sub, is good enough is good enough, right? So, it, with being, when we had Mike Vanderhuel, the drummer for Y and T, sub for us, yep, he he would shed a living crap out of our show, and was certainly imperceptible to the audience, and 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 what blew us away in terms of preparation. And he is the most accomplished of the people who we have had subs. So, yeah, yeah. so I'm just, I'm super befuddled. If you're a guy who takes a sub gig, I don't understand the mentality of, yeah, you know, you know, I'll, I'll be able to, you know, get you through most of it, but there'll, there'll, there'll be some uncomfortable things but that's when you have a sub. That is so unnerving and so unsatisfying to both band and sub. I like, I, would, oh, yeah. I don't want to be a sub. I like, if someone asked me to sub, I wouldn't say yes. I, because- I would, if, and I said this early, uh, it, once we kind of got through tech week for this, this show, I, I told the director, I was like, if I had hired a friend to do this, like this particular gig was a rough one to sub theater in general subs are tolerated it has to be a sub that's approved well, they're by, reading gigs though right but they're reading gigs yeah but this show drums were upstage center like so like you, you there was no hiding like i had to be very aware that a hundred percent of the time the audience could see me and if i was like you know dicking around with my hi-hat or fixing a thing or looking around or do, like doing anything I was going to upstage everybody, right? Like if I was doing something, if my focus was not on the actors in between songs, then that was going to be a huge distraction. So I had to be the best audience member. And that meant not anticipating things like knowing that, you know, either a funny line is coming or a surprise is coming. Like I cannot look over there where I know this person is entering because the crowd doesn't know that they are entering right They're They're about to be surprised by that unless I show them not to be, you know? <laughs> so, um, so I, I, I said, look, you know, this is a tough gig to sub. The director actually came up to me. He's like, how is a sub going to do this gig? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. And what I told him was if it was a friend, I would tell him to quit. Like this is, I would not want to sub that gig that way. If I were doing it, I would have wanted to play one of the dress rehearsals or something just to have the experience of doing it with the cast. Because there's so much that just happens. There's moments where because the band's on stage, you don't get to communicate with each other the way you would in a theater pit. And, uh, and so there's, there's moments where it's just like somebody says a line and now the drums just start there. That's it. You know, hopefully you're at the right tempo and all the other thing, you know, so it was, it was definitely a, you know, feeding him to the wolves kind of scenario. And I told him that I'm like, look, you know, it, it, cause he came and saw it and, and we talked a lot about it afterwards, which made me feel good that he had a lot of questions and he's like, how does this work? How does that work? He's like, I see your notes. Can we talk through this? And I was like, yes, yes. Happily. You know, I, I want this to be successful. And it, uh, it was other than the, you know, I, I left your gear completely d- disheveled and you figure it out, buddy. Thanks for everything. Um, other than that, it was fine. You know, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it's, I, I like subbing 
in the right scenario because of that pressure. I like knowing that my job is to to not be. I know that everybody in the in the you know on stage is going to know that I'm a sub, right? You know, because they know what's going on. But obviously, we don't want the crowd to know that I'm a sub, and I, I want everybody to have a good gig. Like I want to support everybody perfectly, and uh, and so I like that pressure. But it does require a lot of prep work, and um, and it's it's generally you know generally it won't pay off. Like you'll you'll invest way more hours than you will get paid for. Sure. For something yeah. like that, you know, so it has to be there, there needs to be fuel different from just the, the financial aspect of it. It's like, no, nope, I'm going to go in and I'm going to My question it. is, my question is, to your experience, is it similar to mine where the general vibe of engaging a sub is we'll get through it or, it, yes. or it'll be good enough. It's we'll, or get, or it'll be, it, it's we'll get through it. Yeah. 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 I mean, how could it be? How could it be anything else? If you're yeah, not, unless you're going to get a rehearsal and like do all of the things that you would to prep any other band member, if the person's truly coming in relatively cold, well, then good enough is like, how, how could it, how could the bar be higher than that? Well, I've experienced the bar higher. Like I said, when Vanderson yeah. was up for us, we gave him a, a recording of our show, pointed him to a bunch of videos and, it was wish, pretty I damn wish, close. I wish I could have had a recording of your show when I came and sub for you guys. I know. I know. <laughs> and you, you know what? You got a bunch, you got audio, you got some charts. I got, I got like three songs of audio. That was it. You were pretty damn close, Dave. I mean, you know, but I we had a rehearsal. Too many things. We That's had a rehearsal. True. Like you, me and Nick Not, got not the horns. Yeah. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 But I just mean the interest of keeping a gig, even if it's going to be a unsatisfying thing for all involved, when you get a when you get a sub involved is often that thing. I, you know, there's a guy I've seen his Craigslist post that say, "Don't give up a gig if you're short a drummer." You know, I can be that guy. Sure. So he's a he's a, but I don't think he's that guy. He's a I will get you through the gig thing. Yep. Yep. And I don't know. I mean, like, do you think do you think the other side of the coin is nobody will know, right? Like there's not a lot of critical listeners, the musicians in the crowd who are critical listeners, they will, you know, do their smirking thing that, you know, Oh, he missed that or, 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 Oh, they have a, they have a sub and nobody will know for a bar gig. You know, nobody will know for, for many things. Yeah. 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 I, but, well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what carries the day for thinking of that type of thinking. Yeah. I mean, in, in theater, there's, at least in the pits that I play in, there's often the phrase nobody's saving lives here is often uttered, uttered probably by me more than anybody else. But like the sentiment is shared by everyone. Like, you know, there are mistakes even when we've had, you know, we only had subs for a couple of nights uh, throughout this whole run. And I like, I, I don't know that I can count one show as having been perfect where no one yeah. made an error. I mean, there were shows where I didn't, but there were plenty of shows where I did. And we, we, you know, we have each other's back, right? We know, okay, that is a screw up. We'll get this. And the cast also screwed some things up. Like, you know, at times, not every night, but you know, there were, there were moments where the whole idea is you're just supporting each other and getting through it. And yes, it sucks when there's a mistake that's like, you know, there's different degrees of mistakes, as you well know, it sucks when there's a mistake that's like big. Like there was one night where we missed like five minutes of dialogue and I'm not sure how the story made sense to the people that were yeah. in the room, you know, but again, nobody, we're not saving lives here. It, you know, it, it's, it, it's it, like this mistake will be forgotten. And, and it really was in the end, inconsequential, you know, do, are we happy that we made them? No. Uh, do we want to work to not make this certainly the same mistake again? Absolutely. We care. Everybody's focused, but you know, at the end of the day, it's like, well, okay, we here we are. It. Everybody lived. Get it. Everybody lived. The patient, let, patient lived. <laughs> all right. Well, let me let me pivot that conversation to a a relative one. Okay. Okay. All right. I have a buddy who owns a sound company. Gets a lot of sound gigs, and he posted something saying, "Doing a cool private gig at Pebble Beach. You know, the famous Pebble Beach." Amazing band that's been flown up from L.A. to um, to play this gig. Okay. 
And uh, it got me, and I watched the video, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. It got me thinking. So I'm watching the video, and they are playing, I'm trying to think. I think they're playing Brick House. They might be playing Play That Funky Music. Sure. And just kind of observing this, right? Yep. A, they got flown up, so it's a flying gig. If you were, if you were to con- concoct, construct in the Dave Hamilton lab- laboratory, a, a band built for those types of gigs that is going to get paid, everything we've talked about for 400 episodes here, <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, you know, yeah. a lot of it. You know, there, there's the I do it for love. I do sure, it for sure. fun. Many, yep. many do it for money. Many, you know, do it for extra money or their primary source of income. Here, yep. If you wanted to cut to the chase and say, what is the tried and true business model for conducting a band that gets Pebble Beach type gigs? What, what would you do in your laboratory? All right, listen, folks, have you ever dreamt of a stage where your music and your brand shine brilliantly without any tech hassles? Well, you can wake up because our sponsor, Banzoogle, has got your back. First things first, building a website, right? With Banzoogle, in mere minutes, you'll have a website so stunning it could headline a festival. Dive into Banzoogle's treasure trove of fully customizable templates that scream you at every pixel because you get to customize them. Now, let's go to the glitzy merch table, right? You can sell your music, your tickets, and all your funky merch, all commission-free. Want a newsletter? Well, Banzoogle's got that too. Their mailing list tools will have your fans headbanging to your updates and grooving to your beats. And to all of us rock stars juggling various platforms, breathe easy. Banzoogle integrates smoothly with Bandcamp, SoundCloud, YouTube, Bands in Town, and more. It's like having a backstage pass to all your online profiles. Stuck on a chord? Good news, their live musician-friendly support team is tuning in seven days a week. They're your roadies for the digital world. Plans start at just $8.29 a month, including hosting. And get this, your own free custom domain name. Head to Banzoogle.com. You get to try it free for 30 days and then use promo code GIGGABPOD for 15% off your first year. So that's Banzoogle.com, promo code GIGGABPOD, G-I-G-G-A-B-P-O-D for 15% off your first year. Rock on and our thanks to Banzoogle for sponsoring this episode. Also, while I got you here, there's this great new podcast from Consequence Media called The Spark Parade. Every week, host Adam Unzi chats with artists and entertainers about their spark, the artwork that shaped their life and career, whether it's music, books, movies, video games, or any other kind of art. By talking about the things they love, they share insights into what drives their work and style. And you can join Adam every Wednesday as he explores cultural inspirations with people like Chris Gethard, Bob the Drag Queen, Connor Oberst, David Gabori, John Lovett, and Helen Hong. So go listen to Spark Parade wherever you get your podcasts. And our thanks to Adam and the team for doing this swap with us. All right, Paul. So you asked me if I had, if I wanted to put a band together or if I wanted to put a band on stage that would perform at this fly in Pebble Beach gig, right? If I knew that I wanted to prepare for that. I don't know. What I'm saying is, if you wanted to, in Dave Bang Drum, Dave Bang Drum Laboratories, yes, build build a high money corporate event, private event band. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. How would you build it? How would I build it? Well, I mean, there's 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 two options, right? I mean, one is adapt one of the current bands that I'm in to go do that, and then another is to just build from scratch. Now I think taking and, and for the sake of argument, let's assume that everyone in every band that I'm about to talk about is also on board a hundred percent with making this switch because that, 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 that certainly would not be the case with at least one and probably two of the bands I'm about to mention the first two fling and bitter pill. I don't think Bitter Pill would care to adapt to do this. I, I'm certain it's that a big part of it. Uh, I'm certain that Fling wouldn't. But even if everybody was interested, 
that's a that's a it's a big shift to take a band with an existing repertoire, an existing mindset of how it approaches a gig, how it sets up. Like you're talking about a a radical shift from what either of those bands does. So I it probably would not work. Uptown Celebration, of course, is the the sort of wedding function band that I'm in. That's pretty close to to what we're talking about here. So that band could probably drop in and just do this. It has the right pro attitude. And, and I don't mean the other bands are not pro. It, it could be argued that the other bands are far more professional than Uptown. But Uptown is engineered to be that kind of band that is just ready to go and play you know, brick house in September and like, you know, play that funky music and all that stuff. And, and it, yep. that's just what that band does. Right. And so that's the, yeah. Pro's the wrong term. It's, it's a party band. It's a function band. You know, it's, it's engineered to be that fling nor bitter pill are engineered And that's what I'm asking about. Yeah. So yeah. I, I would, if I didn't have, if, if that, if I wanted to create that kind of thing and I didn't have uptown as a band that I'm already in, I, I'd probably just, start reaching out to musicians that I know who I think would be interested in something like that and pitch the idea to them. But, but I would, I would have to paint the picture first and then just show them the picture and say like, okay, here's, here's going to be the song list. Here's how this is going to work. Here's how everything's going to function. Are you in? That's, that's how I would do it. I mean, that's how that's Gar- so funny. That's how Gary did it for for Uptown and and as Dave Bang Drum. I like that. Um, you are being way too freaking analytical about this. I, well, let, let, if let you get, asked me in, in the in the Dave I Bang Drum it. Labs, how would I do it? That's how I would do it. I get it. Yeah. All right. So so let me let me break down the ask in a little bit different way. Well, actually, okay, let me fair. let me lead you to let me lead you to where I'm thinking. Yeah, right? lead the witness, please do. Yeah. All right. We're in Dave Bang Drum Labs. Yep. And we would like to build a band that is self-sustaining with high money gigs. Okay. Go to the shelf and take off to start the whole thing. A female singer who can hit those notes and can riff and yep. can and can entertain. Yep. Yeah, start you got, there. You gotta have that. Correct. Gotta have that. Yep. Next, probably gonna add two more singers, one male for the guy songs and another female, so those three part harmonies are, are banging. And and the three of them are going to move together and kind of give you a little bit of a show. You're going to have that. Okay. Yeah. You're you're you're. If you want the the show, yes. It could though be like even if if you want them to move, it's it, it's got to be an instrumentalist who's standing up, so a guitar player, or bass player who can move. But you could have a singing guitar player, a singing bass player that can also do some kind of choreography with the male and female singers up front Fair. and, and you're Fair. saving a little bit of money there, you, you know, cause that like what you described other than choreo is, is uptown, right? Cause I'm the third harmony singer. And so it like, it works, but I agree. You have to have three singers in some way, shape or form to, to successfully deliver those songs. Yeah. Cover the range and then harmonize, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. All right. So now, We've built the front line, three singers. Next, you're either going to put them all and everybody else in suits, or you're going to put them all in some kind of a costume, mm-hmm. or the ability to, to put either either on. You know, many of these gigs, corporate gigs, ex- have a dress code, yep, and that's what they're expecting. And again, I'm not saying right or wrong. I'm saying the shortest path from conceiving a money band to putting a money band on stage is this formula. And again, this is all inspired by, you know, every song that my buddy who owns the sound company, that his, that this band that they flew in from Los Angeles that nobody's ever heard of. Yep. I can give you 20 bands that you wouldn't have had to go to the expense to fly them in that play the same repertoire. Right. That's fair, but they don't market themselves the right way. Right. Like if, if this person who's in charge of, putting a band on stage feels like they need to reach out and fly in a band. It's because no one local to them has gotten in touch with them in the right way and marketed their band in the right way to get that gig. So in addition to everything that we've talked about in, in terms of musicians, you need to have somebody running this band 
who is absolutely 100% working at it like a business, marketing it, putting all of that stuff together because that's what's necessary to make this happen. I also, if I were in Dave Bang Drum Labs, if I wanted to do this, the first person I would reach out to is Adam Moskowitz from Van Band, and I would ask him what he wants to charge me to license all of the hard work that he has already done <laughs> to put together all those charts because that's what I would want because then I'm not reliant on just the ones. I would want this to be a modular band. I I would not want, you know, for a, a party function band, it just doesn't make sense to me to treat it like a band band, right? Like it, it, it it's much better to have the freedom to say, Yes, to 100% of the gigs that come in, including if there are two gigs on the same night. Like, why wouldn't you do that? Modularize the crap out of it, and then you can be reliable to everyone no matter what. So, yep. I, I, yep. like that, I would, I would absolutely, I would take, I would, I would, as a default, go with the Van Band model and, you know, like, go deep down that path until it was proven to me that that model wasn't going to work for me for whatever reason. I'm not, I'm not positive that you would have to go that far only because this is the GB playlist, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And there are, there are people who are pros who are, who, who, you know, they know the GB playlist, right? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I know several bands in our area that are literally that they are, they are built, they are built to make the cash register ring. And they're really good at it too. Yeah. They, you know, the players are great and the show is great and everything like that. So, so all right. So we started with a, a great female singer, added in two more singers. Maybe they played an instrument, maybe not. We put everybody in suits. We're going to, we're going to put together a set list that is no messing around, no vanity songs, no stretch straight up. Every song is a money song repertoire is going to be non-negotiable in terms of what you're going to put on stage. You're going to play Sweet Home Alabama. You're going to play Brown Eyed right. Girl. Yeah. You're going to play Brick House, right? You know this going probably, in. Yeah. Yep. You're probably going to put three horns in the band. Yeah. I, maybe. I, no, I would I would definitely not do that. I, I Like, there's no world where that's necessary. You, mm. can, you can have horns as an add-on. But I right. would not make the core of the band dependent on horns because you're you're going to price yourself out of some gigs. And, Got and it. so you would you would you would get your core rhythm section, yeah, three singers guaranteed, and it has a price. And then you upsell if they want a horn section. Yeah, and if they want to downsell, what I've seen Gary do with Uptown over the years is say, okay, well we're doing this gig as a five piece or whatever. We're not bringing. The fem our female singer were just doing the male singer right. songs because they had a lower budget and this is what they wanted. And they knew that yep. they were, you know, so yeah, I would, I would make it as modular as you can. And to your point about suits and all that, I would go back to episode 197. So we had episode 397, which is where we had Adam Moskowitz from Van Band on episode 197. So exactly 200 episodes prior, we had Dan Meblin from a band called pop fiction from your area on the show. And Dan Talked about a lot of great things. It's a good episode to listen to. One of the things was dress. And he had a, uh, he uttered a phrase that has stuck with me for 200 episodes and it will stick with me for another 200. And that is don't dress like a waiter. And <laughs> what a great, like what a great vibe to, to share, like you don't want to be bland. You're on stage. You don't want people to mistake you for a waiter. You want to look like you're supposed to be on stage. It doesn't mean that they're going on stage in in ripped jeans and 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 no no t-shirts. Uh, maybe they do that for some gigs where that's appropriate, but for the most part, they are wearing suits. But they're suits with flair and with like they look like band costumes. Don't think of it as a suit. Think of it as a costume. You are going on stage, you are playing a character, wear a freaking costume and own it. And that's yeah, so Dan's band is beautiful. I mean, yeah. you know, beautiful people in it and they, they look great and, you know, they always look great. The band that I saw the other night, they were just suits, you know, the woman was wearing a cocktail dress. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, 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 I don't know. They didn't look like waiters. They certainly weren't as beautiful as Dan's, but they were incredibly clean. 
There was no mistake. There was no one in the band that was the I'm um, the rocker of the band. I'm wearing I'm wearing jeans. They were all on message yep. with their dress. Great. Uh, yeah. And that's really what you need is. Yeah. You don't need to look like pop fiction or any other specific band. Just look like you are in your band. I, I, yeah. 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 So I think I think, you know, repertoire. The makeup of the band, the look of the band. If you accept those things as non-negotiables, I I offer that is the shortest path to creating one of those bands. You still have other work to do, you know, like a lot of big, you know, like a, like a a Pebble Beach gig is is almost definitely booked through a booking agent, and, you know. So whether you can get someone pushing your version of this band um, and getting you those gigs, that's a, that's another aspect. But I would say that that that's the essence of the formula, the business plan, the yep. model yep. of, of getting a band that'll get those gigs. Now, the next part of the question. So you talked about bitter pill and fling and, you know, I certainly have the house rockers. Sure. Sure. So if you didn't want to take that path, what would you advise people to take your existing groups and make them put them in the ball game? For more of those gigs. And let me again say the house rockers get some of those gigs, not near as many as I would like um, uh, compared to other bands. I know that uh, that's all they do week in and week out. They work the wedding circuit. They work the corporate event circuit. Right. But for example, what would fling have to do? Well, fling would have to gonna... start playing cover songs again, which, which is not on the roadmap for fling. And that's fine. I, I don't, I don't say like it. In fact, that's great. I, I like the fling originals that we play, but let's, let's rewind to when fling was playing a bunch of covers. Cause that, cause right. that's a really a good place to ask this question. And what you would have to do is tear the band apart. Keep all the members if you want, but tear apart everything that you know about being in that band. In fact, I would call it something different. You might you might want to trade on your your existing name and so fine, but in your own minds you have to think about this as something completely different from what you are currently doing. If if what you're currently doing is playing bars and and some private parties for like you know friends' birthdays and things like that, right? Because everything that you're well, I don't want to say everything. Eighty percent of what you are doing is going to hurt you when you are moving into the, the function party band headspace and gig space. You, you can't treat them the same. They are different. And, and I, I remember when Lisa, my wife came and saw uptown for the first and only time we played a gig that was sort of public. It was, it was a private gig at a public venue. And so people could come and, and Lisa was like, do I get to come see this band? And like, yeah. And I've told this story here. She said to me after the first set, she's like, yeah, this band's pretty good, but Fling's way better. I'm like, oh, of course Fling's way better. And she's like, so why does this band make more? I'm like, because it's a whole different business model. And we're not stuck on being a band that we play the songs that move us or we play the songs that we like or we, we approach the gigs the way we like. It's like this band is built, Uptown is built for money. Like we are playing and, and I don't mean to say that we're bamboozling people. We're not, we're delivering exactly the product that they want. Exactly. And, yep. and that's the mindset you have to go in with is what is the product that we have to deliver? And I don't just mean what you put on stage, right? You, you're willing to get there, you know, five hours before the gig, because that's how it has to work. And you set up a certain way and you, I understand that, you know, when you're at these, you know, high dollar venues that you can't be out in and amongst the people, you have to like move right. through the shadows and like all of that stuff, you just have, you just know it going in. It's not, I was going to say you have to accept it. It's not even, you have to accept it. You choose it. No one's forcing this, right? So if that's what you want to do, then this is what you actually want to do right and so no going in that yep that's how it's going to be and we're not going to you know take an extended solo in the middle of this song because somebody's feeling it tonight nope it's like these are the arrangements 
This is the thing. We are essentially a live jukebox that is delivering exactly what these people want to hear. And it's all packaged up perfectly for them. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But yeah. you got to know it going in. And so that would be the hardest part about adapting like a cover bar band into this is everybody in the band would need to think differently. And you really need to present yourself differently. And that's going to be really hard if you're using the same name. It's like, well, I found videos of you on YouTube and you were playing. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, that's why I think you would want to change your name because people are going to find not the look that you're looking for that. you. Well, that you yeah. The, the house rocker story to this is a little bit different. So again, I have half the guys in my group, sometimes more, make their living from playing music, right? They teach all day, they gig at night. Because of the number of gigs that the house rockers gives them, I have, I've become, you know, a priority, right? However, they would love to make more money. Yeah. We certainly went through periods of time where we talked about what it would take to make more money. And, the, and it came to the conversation of, should we have a girl singer? Should we? Uh, we need to dress better. Yep. Right? Yep. And there was various levels of resistance to any of these things. Right? Of course. And it pushing it into the discomfort zone. It's changed. Created a lot of conversations. It's change. It's change. It's, it's, um, it's more than change. Or, or related to change, it was an affront to people's worldview. Right? Can't you see how good? Like you see my house, you haven't seen my uptown funk, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, and really, you know, we're a pretty good band, but we missed out on a lot of gigs in the years, you know, over the years, because we we ended up having to compromise and, and kind of stay stay with our own formula. Well, you didn't, I, I, I would, I would challenge that. I wouldn't say you missed out on a lot of gigs. You took a lot of different gigs, right? You didn't take party slash function gigs because you're not that band, but you did take a lot of town festivals and you know, no, but what's the, those you're, corporate functions? You're, you're, I'm going to, I'm just going to acknowledge it because our listeners know your Wi-Fi sucks tonight for whatever it is. Like I'm, you're cutting in and out, but it, but it, it's, uh, you're intelligible. Anything. It's fine. It's all good. Oh, weird. Yeah. I, I don't yep. hear anything. Yep. Um, anyway, uh, my point is that we didn't, we didn't take the corporate function gigs. Right. And, and because we weren't, or not take them, we weren't offered them. Cause, cause you're not that band. Things, right. But the guys wanted to be that band mm. in terms of money. And that's actually the point of all this. And so, yeah, they, but know, they didn't want to be that band. They wanted to have the right. money that that band earned while being that's right. the house rockers. And that's why I'm saying the first thing I would do if I was going to take one of my existing bands and turn it into this is I would call it something different. Uh, there's a guy because it changes, not to just changes like what people are going to find on YouTube or whatever, but it changes your mindset too. There's a guy here in New Hampshire, I think it's Eric Grant, uh, the Eric Grant band. Yeah. And he like Eric plays in, uh, you know, it's like this country original thing. I, I think mostly originals, but then Eric also plays in like, and I can't remember the name of the other band, but it's a lot of the same lineup, if not perhaps the entire same lineup. And, uh, I'm just looking to see if I can figure it out while we're talking about it here. I can't find it. But it's it's basically the same band under a different name playing functions and parties and weddings and all of that stuff. And it's like you get the same people on stage, but they approach it differently. It's like, oh, you get the EGB this way. And maybe the Eric Grant band is the name of the wedding band. I, and then the other thing is something else. I forget. But he definitely has these two sides of this band's personality. And I, I think that's, I think that's a good way to approach this. And maybe the way to approach it with the house rockers is like, it, you know, I, I call it the house weddings or house functions. or I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like come up with a better name than I'm just coming up with off the cuff here, but I get it. Something where it's like, Oh, Hey, yep. We have these 10 house rocker gigs this summer. And then we have these four house function gigs this summer. 
And everybody knows that the house function gigs, all oh, that's different. We're going to be there all day because that's what it takes to earn all that money. You know, you are, you are being paid more, but you are spending way more time at these gigs than a typical bar slash cover band does. Right. And, but it, you know, it's all of it. It's a package and it's like, Oh yeah, I'm in for that. And you might have like, maybe you've got a, you know, a bass player or something who's like, Oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not into that. And then you just have a different bass player for those gigs. And it's like, Oh yeah. Okay, fine. You know, whatever. It's all good. But yeah, I, I think you gotta, in your mind, you have to approach these things. They are two different animals. And I, always hear about you know cover bands that start doing quote unquote well in bars and they're like oh the next level is weddings and it's like not for you like the next financial level is weddings but you're not on that path you're on the path of playing bar gigs forever like you need to change paths if you want to go to a play wedding gigs and part of that path means playing very very few bar gigs maybe one a year if that Right. And so you've got to decline those in order to make the other side work. I don't know. It's, it's what I've seen. Yeah. 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 I don't know. But what do I know? I'm just a guy with a microphone and 400 (laughs) episodes. Dave bang drum, Dave, you know, rant into microphone. Um, speaking of microphones, because they're gear, we do have some gear gab to share. We're not going to do it this week. And I, I am sorry to tease you all once again, but I was able to, this weekend to test out the new in-ears that I mentioned recently that are priced very fairly. And it's a company called all clear A L C L A I R. I've tested a few of their models. Uh, I was able to do it at the theater this past weekend. I will share all of the details of that in next week's episode 401. And I, I, I promise you, you're going to be happy with, with, uh, with what I found, I, I'm happy with what I found. It's like ears, in ears priced the way, the custom fit in ears priced the way they should be, in my and opinion. You know what? It's long overdue. It seems like that market has a lot of competitors and it's crazy expensive. And it seems like, whereas many things have been disintermediated or, 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 or disrupted, it seems like that market has gone the other way for the past couple of years, where yeah. the high end is so crazy high. It only makes sense that there's a commodity to it at this point in time yep. that someone would be able to figure out how to do it at a price that makes sense. So I'm, I'm super excited to hear you shared it with me and I looked them up on the, on their website. Yeah. They look, they look spectacular. Like every bit of what the, the known characters would look like. Exactly. The price points are unbelievable. Correct. That's right. Correct. So you'll do your own research this week because I know how the internet works and you can't help yourselves. And that's great. And then you'll hear my review of, of each of three models um, that that uh, that I was able to check out this weekend, and we'll you know we'll we'll get everybody off to the races. But yeah, that the the net of it is I'm super impressed and blown away by what you can get for the prices that they uh, that you know that they sell for versus like what Ultimate Ears sells for. It's crazy, crazy. Or do it. Yep. We will talk about that next week. For now, uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for 400 episodes, folks. It means a lot. So thank you. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com if you have any thoughts to share. If you know of another in-ear company that's pricing things well and delivering a quality product, send us that too or anything else. Um, what's the thing, Paul? I, I can never remember. The thing, the thing is always be performing.